one. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you join from. Today, I'm going to talk about something very much relevant to the telco industry today, cloud native. Now, we're trying to move away from hardware native to cloud native, and let's discuss what it really means to telcos. And before going in, before jumping into cloud native, I thought of bringing in some of the words into the discussion, starting from the word hardware. Now the telco industry, which is an industry very much old, over 160 years, we have been dealing with hardware and hardware configurations, whether it is a box in the network or whether it is a box in, at the customer premises. Talk about boxes and configuration of those boxes. And then came in software, not really after hardware, but there was software with hardware, but the focus of software came in into existence. And with that, we have a new word called softwareization. We will look at what is softwareization uh, in details later on. And after that, we saw cloud came in, cloud computing and cloud. And as a result, now we have a new term called cloudification. And also, after that, very recently, the containers came in. And the containers to telco industry is quite new, but containers are not new in the ICT industry. So with that, we have a new term again called containerization. So we have several of these isation or softwareization, cloudification, and containerization. If you really look at the real meaning of softwareization, now of course there is no proper definition for softwareization, but if you really look at the IEEE ASDN study group, we have this definition, which is very much tells what softwareization really is. Not going to read a whole text, but if you really look at the key terms defined uh, in this text is actually cloud computing, SDN, and NFV, and together we can call that as softwareization. And if you go to cloud and with that cloud computing, of course we have a proper definition from NIST, which is National Institute of Standards and Technology, which again identifies cloud computing in this particular definition. Again, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but if you really look at, you can see the words like on-demand network access to shared pool of configurable computing resources that can be rapidly provisioned and released with minimal management effort. And with this, we have five essential characteristics for cloud computing or cloud, which are on-demand self-service, broad network access, resource pooling, rapid elasticity, and also measured services. We also have three service models, software as a service, platform as a service, and infrastructure as a service. We also have four deployment models, private, community, public, and hybrid cloud computing deployment models. So with this, we have a sort of understanding what is cloud and what is cloud computing is. Then we have cloud native, which is of course defined by CNCF or Cloud Native Computing Foundation, which again uses several key terms to define what cloud native really is. If you look at container service measures, microservices, immutable infrastructure, and declarative APIs exemplify this approach that is part of the definition and loosely couple systems that are resilient, manageable, and observable, and also with robust automation. So that is large number of words being used to describe what cloud native is. But if you really want to simplify what really cloud native means, you can always think that as taking the full advantage of the unique capabilities of cloud as being cloud native. Then finally, we have the word container. Uh, of course, I could not find a proper definition uh, of the word container, but it actually sounds the standard unit of software that packages up code and all its dependencies so the application runs quickly and reliably from computing environment to another. So 
at very out, outset, we see containers are very much flexible and has a lot of uh, agility and flexibility in terms of deploying uh, new services and applications. Now, with this understanding of softwareization, cloudification, and containerization, we look at the industry, what are we really trying to do with these terms and also the practical application of those? Now, the reason why we discuss all these things today is because of a specific business problem. And this business problem has been quite consistent and the graphs that I'm going to show is something that we have been discussing for the last several years. With the telco industry moving from voice dominant business model to data dominant business model, we see the traffic is increasing. It's not just the transported traffic in terms of so many bits per second transported, but also the amount of bytes stored. So many bytes, so many petabytes these days. So the traffic is increasing. As a result, telcos are trying to sort of incorporate these uh, capabilities in their systems and networks. As a result, they have to spend capex. So the cost is also increasing. But if you really take the revenues and the number of customers, most markets, if you really take mobile markets, we see the number of customers actually sort of stagnated. And the revenues are, though increasing, it's not the way the operators would want the revenues to be increased. So as a result, we have this famous decoupling between network traffic and the operator revenues. And for the last several years, we see as a whole in the industry across the globe, uh, this gap is actually widening. So we wanted solution as an industry, as an ecosystem. So one way is bringing the cost down on the other side, if, if you really take, it is increasing the revenue up. So, because this is really a business problem, even though the solutions are coming from technical angle, the real problem is a business problem. So we have things like automation, virtualization, and DevOps coming in, in terms of bringing costs down, introduction of SD and NFE and cloud. And on the increasing of revenue side, it is all about bringing in the agility and flexibility. The software very much inherently has uh, in terms of bringing in new services and changing, modifying services and sort of going to market fast and also meeting customer expectation fast. So this is the type of business problem that we had and also we still have. Now, if you really want to bring all these discussions to one slide and like sort of include all the things in one slide, the business side and the technical side together, it's, it's all about, it starts from the business problem, the business transformation that the operators want to have moving away from the traditional communication service provider business to digital service provider. So I have deliberately put COSP instead of CSP because CSP sometimes stands for cloud service providers as well. So moving away from communication service providers to digital service providers. Now, what underpins that, if you really go into the technical side a little bit, is actually going from networks to platforms. The traditional way of thinking the communication service provider networks as a platform in the digital service provider domain. If you go further down, if you really look at networks, you realize that networks are nothing but hardware boxes, uh, which we need to configure. But in terms of a platform, we actually abstract all these hardware capabilities into software and we have software and cloud native going forward. If you go further, we can, though the hardware, software and cloud native pieces are sort of technical, to achieve these things, we really need the people factor very importantly. So with hardware technology side, we need hardware mindset to be transformed to software mindset and the software mindsets now need to be transformed to cloud native mindset. So if you compare the transformation of technology and the transformation of people, transformation of people is not easy, uh, even though it is very much easily explained in a PowerPoint. Going further down, we see old generation networks or OGNs transformed to next generation networks and next generation networks are virtualized. So we have software generation networks and 
virtual next generation networks and going forward we actually don't talk about networks much we are, but we are talking about telco cloud uh, in the telco domain so finally if you really go further deep into the technologies the real technologies that we really use to make this transformation we understand that we started with traditional circuit switching legacy TDM type of networks, then moved to packet IP based, ethernet based networks, and introduced softwareization, network virtualization, and cloud a little bit. And then going forward, we're talking about a fully cloudification uh, in the telco domain. Now, one of the advantages we see is that even if you are late, because you know, because of all these legacy of 160 plus years in the telco domain, it's not easy to transform uh, from hardware to software. So even if you are late uh, in bringing in softwareization, now we have a golden opportunity to actually to move away from NGN and directly go to cloudification. But with a certain condition, if you have the right skills, knowledge and education within yourself, moving away from uh, this hardware mindset of networks to more of a implementation of a cloud, uh, telco cloud, is uh, it's not really difficult. With that background, if you really take what is actually happening in the industry as an as an ecosystem, you see the standards, whether it is de facto standards or the standards uh, which are these days predominantly coming from the cloud communities, the standards are moving quite fast. I mean, very fast because every day we see uh, that new projects are being introduced, new projects are being graduated, incubated, etc. And also we see vendors relatively fast in adopting those technologies, actually sort of bringing those uh, standards uh, to their equipment and the software capabilities. And if you really take the end customers of service providers, mostly the enterprise customers, they're also moving their critical workloads to public cloud and hybrid cloud, private cloud, et cetera, they're also adapting uh, quite fast. But in between, we have these operators, CSPs and the other telcos, which are very much uh, late in transforming themselves. I'm talking about at the broader uh, context, uh, quite late, because we have a few examples where few tier one operators are moving quite fast giving good examples to the industry, but as a whole, uh, the operators are relatively uh, slow in terms of transforming themselves and uh, catching up with the other uh, stakeholders in the industry. So if you take, uh, for example, network functions, uh, I would call that as network function evaporation. We have functions which are related to the networks and we sort of so with the virtual network functions, we have now VNFs, virtualization of network functions. Because we have VNFs, now we call the previous versions of the functions are sort of physical network functions or PNFs. Now we did not stop there. We actually moved from VNFs to CNFs. And now we are talking about cloud native network functions. Really, these network functions are implemented in a cloud native environment or in the cloud. So we see this trend as well, moving from PNFs to VNFs to CNFs. So if you take SDN together with the hardware defined networking and these PNFs, VNFs and CNFs into the context of network transformation, you see we are trying to move away from physical network functions and hardware defined networking to more of a cloud type of a environment or a platform but we see in between the transformation is not that easy. We have to deal with a mix of both worlds. For example, we have to deal with physical things, virtual things, software things, cloud things all together. And we need to try and sort of make the migration period small so that we can make the transformation fast. Now, the reason we are so much comfortable with the start, which is the PNFs and the hardware defined networking is that though the systems are or the networks are complex we actually were able to manage the complexity because we mastered the complexity in terms of configurations now same thing applies here 
if you have the right skills knowledge and education you can always sort of uh, handle the migration period and we see a lot of telcos are actually doing that going forward we see we need to deal with not just pnfs vnfs but cloud native network functions and also software defined networking uh, many things becoming software defined and whether this ultimate uh, environment or the platform is complex or simple will be actually uh, decided by the amount of knowledge skills and education you have as a telco so going forward in terms of both technical and business angle if you really look at what are the long term assets for a telco now there's no doubt for any organization the long term asset are the people who work in that organization so same for telcos so if you keep the people aside or the workforce uh, which is the biggest asset but if you really take the the other physical assets that we have we have routers switchers optical gear uh, data center servers etc but the way things are improving the way things are actually transform uh, in the industry with new capabilities new improvements we see the lifetime of all these hardware boxes and software capabilities are very much within the horizon of 5 years or less so going forward the long term assets will actually become the buildings and the ducts and the fibers and also the towers if you are a mobile or wireless operator but other than that we cannot really identify anything as long term hardware assets for telcos everything when you, the moment you move from hardware to software and to then to cloud you see uh, they are very much uh, changing in uh, days or minutes uh, depending on the services that you offer it. so the original objectives of the transformation were automation virtualization now containerization and then devops and also devsecops uh, work practices and also flexibility and agility those were the original object objectives and those objectives will still remain same and going forward with cloud uh, those are not objective but with cloud we have new opportunities or new capabilities bringing in things like the openness and the ability to have microservices the modularity and the massive scalability things like going hyperscale and also uh, avoiding vendor locking because you really don't have to depend on hardware you have uh, all the tools that you can actually manage hardware using software so you have an immense uh, flexibility and uh, power in your hand as a telco because now you have the full uh, flexibility in handling in, on your own software and also simple and again it is related to the amount of knowledge skills and education that you have so it's it's all about the wish will and the skill that will decide whether you are transforming from hardware centric to software centric to uh, cloud centric uh, type of platforms and systems okay another interesting aspect uh, again in the whole ecosystem that we see is new players are actually coming into the telco domain now for example if you take all these big cloud players like google they have google cloud for telecommunications and they have anthos which is the on premise version of the google cloud same for aws aws has uh, aws uh, telecommunications and outposts they are on premise version of the aws cloud azure and azure for operators and azure stack so all the cloud players are now offering cloud native and cloud native telco type of services to telco especially targeting at 5g and we see uh, traditional uh, virtualization type of uh, vendors like vmware they have vmware telco cloud infrastructure uh, which is uh, the on premise version of if you really want to build uh, cloud native infrastructure within a telco domain they have now uh, these uh, capabilities available so we see a lot of people who are in the traditional telco hardware type of business are now moving to hardware to software and from software to uh, sort of cloud uh, type of uh, business models two couple of interesting examples one coming from germany telefonica 
uh, actually trying to sort of uh, implement all their 5G core functionalities within AWS public cloud. And then we have uh, another example from Japan, which is Rakuten, uh, which is a fully virtualized uh, 5G network from the RAN up to the core network. So we see, uh, though Telefonica and Rakuten are two big uh, players in the industry, we see these things are practically implemented by operators. So these are two good examples where the other telcos also can follow up. And I think as a result, we will have a lot of new standards and new uh, opportunities and capabilities in the industry where it will make the lives of the other operators easy uh, to sort of make the transformation themselves. If you look at the cloud native uh, ecosystem, you have uh, something like 20.5 trillion market capitalization and 65.34 uh, billion funding for all these cloud native uh, projects. Uh, some of the projects are like if you take Kubernetes and the other projects are very much uh, used in the industry and we have a large list of uh, projects and several other components uh, within this ecosystem, which looks very promising uh, even for the telco industry. So as software is going to take the center stage for telcos, and most of these software actually coming from open source. Now the question comes, how do you want your open source software to be? Like, uh, you want uh, most of these open source, if you really look at the open source code, they're free. It's open source and most of them are open source free software. So how do you want your open source soft, uh, software to be? It's uh, free like a beer or free like a puppy. So it depends on how much knowledge, skills and education that you have as a telco. So the amount of capability that you have as a telco to sort of uh, master software will actually decide how we are going to succeed uh, in the uh, long-term journey of uh, your transformation. So in summary, softwareization or now cloudification of networks and systems is key for telco transformation. And however, it is difficult to switch from hardware mindset from software mindset and now to cloud mindset. Though it is easy to transform your technology or the hardware or the systems in technology perspective, changing the mindsets of people uh, working with you is not easy. There are many challenges, mostly non-technical and those need to be actually handled by the operators themselves, mostly to do with uh, skills, knowledge and education and also to do with the culture that you have within your organization. So skills will be the most important than anything else. So with that, I conclude my presentation and thank you very much for listening. Thank you.